Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first episode of your daily coffee with West Gardner. This is going to be a new news thing that I try to do with somewhat regularity um, every weekday or until I get tired of stupid people in the news. Um, I'm going to try and also keep this unbiased because um, I don't want to pull a fox and claim to be fair and balanced when in fact I am a bunch of raging lunatics. It is a beautiful Friday morning uh, if you're anywhere but Kansas, um, but it's a great day for some uh, news, especially because of uh, this weird news story that I have to start off with you today. It's about a man named Edward Smith, 63 uh, years of age, who is a self-proclaimed mechophile. That is to say, somebody that is attracted sexually to automobiles. And in a cliched headline uh, that is magical and weird and fantastic, he is all revved up for love and has had sex with purportedly 999 cars. To quote himself, he has only ever had sex with one actual person. The rest have all been cars. His conquests include Mustangs, Jaguars, even reportedly a TV helicopter. I don't even know how you get a hold of one of those, but apparently that's true. Before we continue on with the facts, can I just uh, ask you lovely people, how does one have sex with an automobile? Do you uh, slap it against the side panels? Do you uh, open up the gas tank and whisper sweet nothings into the rearview mirror? Is, is giving it to the muffler kind of still like taboo, yet you have to know each other for a while? Maybe buy her chocolates before you even try to get it back there? Mr. Smith lost his virginity um, to his neighbor's Volkswagen Beetle. There's not even a lot you can say about that. Also, um, even though his conquests range far and wide, he is finally ready to settle down. Ladies, cars, 4x4s, trucks, jets, helicopters, jet skis, power boats. Uh, he is ready to settle down with his own Volkswagen that he has owned for 30 years, uh, named Vanilla. So I at first assumed that it was just a stripper. My only problem being uh, is that my mother really likes Volkswagens. And now I'm gonna have to think about this story whenever she mentions wanting to get one. And at first, you know, it's very easy to look at this and go, oh, that's just a very weird person, a very weird story. You know, how can he possibly do that? He's not normal. Well, reportedly, um, from his neighbors and from other friends that he knows, totally normal in uh, no, uh, normal, uh, regular social settings. You know, you couldn't tell that he likes to give it to cars, but other than, you know, that big fact, guy's completely more or less normal. The video that does come with this, and this is from the Huffington Post, uh, does paint him in a little bit of a weird light, and perhaps unfairly. Uh, but at first I was like, oh, well, this guy's a wacko. But what he does, it doesn't hurt people. It's not like he's doing it with animate objects. So I can't really judge the guy too harshly. Live and let live is what we, you know, support here. And going immediately from happy, weird news, we go straight into some political BS. According to an article from Michelle L. Price of the Associated Press, Utah has reportedly saved over $350,000 dollars since 2012 when they instituted a new law for drug screening uh, individuals who apply for welfare. Now, uh, this is of course also, um, according to officials, and I don't put a whole lot of stock into officials, 
because officials are the ones running the government right now. Republican Brad Wilson, uh, who crafted the law, says, we don't get them to work if they don't get into the program and do what they need to do, which is very specific, I know. Uh, his opponent, Gina Cornia, says that unfairly judges the poor and paints them all with the same general picture, uh, which I could agree with, probably, if the law did that. Utah doesn't randomly screen or screen everyone. It distributes questionnaires to people, and if you test um, on the questionnaire as having a high probability for drug abuse, you are then required to take a drug test, and only then do you get, you know, denied welfare. And it's not even like the people that test are sent to prison or anything like that. They're actually entered into substance abuse treatment by the Utah law. So it just seems like it's helping people from my end. I don't live in Utah. I had a girlfriend from there once. That doesn't really count. Uh, so I can't really say for 100% certainty, you know, how factual this is all is, but this is, according to what I've read so far, uh, Utah's law is not nearly as judgmental and uh, typecasting as the law that other, uh, other states have either tried to pass or have passed. My whole thing as far as this goes, uh, as to people who say that it invades privacy or is unfair, uh, it's search and seizure without probable cause, I had to take a drug test to work at Target. So my whole thing, as far as the welfare thing goes, is that you have to take a drug test for employment with the government or with most reputable businesses. So if you're going to take taxpayer money, uh, valid or not, you know, depending on different people's situations, uh, it is a valid system for some people. Some people do need the welfare. There are also, though, people who sit there and uh, abuse the system, who uh, have no intention of ever actually holding a job. There are those who do use the system to purchase drugs and other paraphernalia. As long as it targets the people who want to abuse the system and, quite frankly, give the people who actually need the help a really shitty name uh, to a lot of people, you know what? Sorry, but, uh, you know, go ahead and do the drug tests. Uh, anyway, that's my opinion. And that's what I'm going to preface this for every video in the future. These are my opinions. I present this as a news time thing. But this really is just one guy giving you his opinion to hopefully diversify uh, the world a little bit, open up your mind, give you some different sides to a story. Um, we're going to close out today with a little video um, from a channel, Stephen Parkhurst's. It's going to be linked down below. I probably horribly uh, mispronounced that. It's about millennials. So those of us who were born in the 90s, on into more recent times, and just kind of my general opinion on whenever, whenever older people start talking shit about the young folks. Um, it's an excellent video, unless you are easily offended, like my dad. Uh, but otherwise, uh, that is about all that I think that we have time for today. Hopefully for a first episode, this wasn't awful. Uh, this has been West Gardner with your daily coffee, and thanks for watching, folks. Have a great day.